There's a chickadee that's come around. I've been lying here reading. I've been reading some good stuff. It talks about our agency. And in this case, agency refers to our ability to act for ourselves, our freedom to choose. We all have the freedom to choose good or evil, selfishness or selflessness. We all have the ability to choose obedience and disobedience. And <clears throat> when we obey the commandments, we are blessed so much. We're able to have the Holy Spirit with us. But when we don't obey the commandments, we're not able to have it with us. It's one of those eternal laws, like the, the laws of science. You know, where there are certain laws, and if you, if you do things, same thing, and they get the same response three times in a row, then scientific, that's a scientific test or something. Well, spiritual stuff has laws too. And when you obey, when you obey the commandments, you can be filled with the Spirit. And you can be prompted. And as you follow those promptings, those, um, their ideas, from deep down inside the still small voice, when you follow those promptings, you get more of them. And whatsoever leads you to do good and to Christ is of God. And whatsoever leads you to do bad is not of God. And we have our choices. And we become according to what our choices are. If we choose to be good, we become more and more filled with light. And we become happier. And we become more loving. But if we choose to disobey and do our own thing, we become less happy. We might not feel miserable, like on the standard of what happiness is to the world, we might think that we're just normal. But there's an element of happiness that you can have when you obey all the commandments that's not possible when you're not obeying them all. And if you're not obeying them all, and even if you are, we all make mistakes. And so there's repentance. And when you repent, it gives the opportunity as you cleanse yourself of darkness by apologizing and trying to, to do what's right, you get the most wonderful feeling of joy as you're forgiven. That's what the whole thing about Jesus Christ is, is that he paid for our sins. He bled at every pore so that our sins might be remitted. There was no way for that to happen otherwise. There had to be an infinite atonement made for the sins because God's laws are just. And if you break a law, only an unclean thing, no unclean thing can dwell in the presence of God. And when you break a law, you become unclean. And saying you're sorry would not be enough if the law had not been paid for. Somebody had to suffer the payment for breaking the law. Just like when you paint yourself into a corner, like if you sin a lot, you end up in that corner and you can get out. But walking across the newly varnished floor means that you have to repair the paint job and you've got the paint on the bottom of your feet now. You can get out, you can do it, but repentance is a little bit of work. You can't just keep going on in the way you're going on. But when Jesus Christ, it's a very wonderful story about the atonement. Um, um, if you think of a, a person who borrowed some money and then couldn't pay it back, and so he has to either go to jail or pay it back. If he can't pay it back, he would have to go to jail. And then a nice person comes along and says, I'll pay it back for him so he won't go to jail. 
and he can make small payments to me. I will set the terms, and he will pay me, and then he can be um, out of the bad um, credit. And it's the same thing with us with Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father has given us our lives, and we can come back and live with him again if we don't sin. But if we do sin, and then we are dirty, there's no way to come back. And so Jesus Christ paid that punishment for each sin for us. He felt the pain that we go through. He, he understands what it's all like. And he, he paid for our sins. So now, when we repent, we are perfectly clean. Clean and pure as if we had just come from Heavenly Father. So we can go back. It's important to repent all the time because if you wait until the very end to repent, there's not time to build a character. And as you repent, you build your character. You become a nicer person. When you repent for being mean, the more you repent for being mean, the less mean you are because you know you don't want to repent for it again. You appreciate the value of not being mean. So as you repent of that, you become a nicer person. And all the things that you repent of, you become the opposite. You become a better, cleaner, a, a more good person. More filled with the Spirit, more filled with light. And it's cool. It's awesome to get um, promptings. It's really awesome. And I'll leave you my testimony. I know that God lives. And I know that Jesus is the Christ. And I know that when I repent, I am so filled with joy. I cannot contain it. I can't keep from smiling. And I have to do it often or else my sins add up. Because basically I am very selfish. And as I act out my selfish ideas and behaviors... I I lose the spirit, and so I have to repent. And I leave you my testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Bye.